guys, welcome back to HRG TV. My name is Ben, and today we're actually gonna be doing more cool stuff. I know you guys are like used to dumb stuff. But today we're gonna do more cool stuff. We got a brand new 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. This is a Big Bend edition. Basically drove directly here from the dealership. It has 30 miles on it. It's as brand new as brand new gets. So we're gonna do an installation of our one and a half inch lift kit on this today. All right, so basically what you're looking at here is the Big Bend Edition, which has the three cylinder engine. And I must say, look how tidy. There's hardly any wires or hoses anywhere. Jokes aside, this thing is pretty sweet. You can't go wrong with the new Bronco Sport no matter what trim level you get. Of course, you guys know I'm partial to the Badlands Edition. I just want more power. I don't, you know, I want the off-road. I don't really care about gas mileage as much as a lot of people do. So if you are concerned about gas mileage, you definitely want to look at the Big Bend or Outer Banks Editions. Those have the small engine and get much better fuel economy. So with all that out of the way, I say we just get right to it. Step one, jack the car up, get it on jack stands. Step two, remove the wheels and tires. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is remove this brake line right here and this ABS line right here. They just slide off, or at least these do. There's a little clip on this one. Let's use a tool to pry that off. And then it's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds this on. It's actually a, an eight millimeter bolt right here. All right, now that we've got the ABS and brake lines off, next step is gonna be removing the sway bar link and that is gonna get replaced with a shorter one. All right, now that we've got the sway bar end link unbolted, to get it out, you actually have to steer the car a little bit to the right. We're doing the left side now, so we're gonna steer a little bit to the right. That'll give it room to slide out. All right, one important thing to note is that you're gonna wanna take the nuts off. You do not wanna turn this side because this is actually splined and it won't turn and it'll mess up those splines if you do that. So what we're gonna do is tap it right here to get the bolt out. There you go. All right, moving on, you're gonna to wanna to take these clips off right here. These little clips just come right off. To get this piece to come up right here, and that piece is gonna come up and allow you to get inside there. Now make sure you put these somewhere where you're not gonna lose them. All right, there, now that comes up. Now you can see we can get in there to the other screws. I'm gonna take this bolt out right here, put the drill underneath there like that, and then you can get to this bolt right here. This piece here just comes right out, like so. Now you have access to all three of these bolts. Now you are gonna reuse these, so We'll keep those handy. Now, as you take this last bolt out, that's gonna be the only thing holding the strut in place. So what you're gonna do is have someone else hold the camera while I unscrew this. Hold on to the strut while you take that out. Okay. All right, so while you've got the strut out, you wanna support the outer hub with the jack to prevent the inner CV joint from coming apart. All right, now you're gonna wanna ever so carefully pull this off just with a, a pry tool of some sort. And now what you're gonna wanna do is drill these new holes up here about three inches. All right, so this next step is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we're gonna mount the spacer to the top of the strut and the kit comes with these bolts right here to do so. And if you guys are having trouble finding the bolts or you think they're missing, the bolt packs are always inside the spacer, guys. So it might've gotten shuffled around in transit, but it's inside here. So we put the bolts in there so they don't get lost, but somehow they still get lost, but they're in there. So just take a look. All right, now you wanna just slide that bolt right through the spacer and thread it into the strut as shown. Times three. That is a precision fit, my friend. Precision. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. Almost. You use a ratcheting wrench, saves a little bit of time. You wanna make sure you get these nice and tight. You don't want anything fucking rattling. Nobody likes rattling. <sighs> tight. Okay, now all we have to do at this point is Put it all back together. Easy squeezy lemon peasy, as they say. 
I forgot there's one more step. All right, never mind. We're not done. We got to do a little bit of cosmetic surgery on the bottom edge of this strut. When you lift, the axles become a little bit more angled, and the axle can actually almost damn near just about touch that. It still works even if you don't cut this, but I say cut it because it gives it a little more room, and it's not going to hurt anything, let's be honest. Just taking a little bit of metal off there just to give it a little bit of space to to breathe and you're always going to want to wear your safety schmafty gear we're just going to take a little off the top right there ready <laughs> done that pretty much does it for the shock and the lift kit spacer installation now we just have to put it back in which is um well, easier said than done, but we're going to get it done. Don't worry about it. All right, this next part is actually easier if you have a friend helping you. Someone who can actually hold the strut in from underneath here while another person threads the bolts in from the top. But if you don't have a buddy, it can be done. It's just a little bit challenging because you have to hold the strut in exactly the right place to get it to line up. I'm going to just, I'm going to park you guys right about here. And we are going to reuse the factory bolts. Not that difficult, really. It just gets heavy really fast, you know? Is it hitting? There it goes. You have to just line it up just right. Once you get one bolt started though, whew, gets heavy fast for this old man. Another bolt will go in right there. I'm winded. Jeez, I'm getting old. After all that, I managed to lose a bolt. Put everything in this box. Where the hell did it go? Well, you know what? For the purposes of the video, we're gonna just move on. Moving on then, I'll find the bolt afterwards. But now, just so you can see what to do. This is gonna thread in like that. Whoo, precision, I love precision. And right there, right there. And then tighten this bolt here. Tighten that up like your life depends on it. Okay, done. All right, last thing we're gonna do on this side is bolt this little plastic piece back in, which is a little screw that goes in right there. And then another one that goes in right there. Done. All right, the top part's done anyway. All right, let's go down here and finish up the bottom. One of the things I did earlier was I went ahead and attached this before I put the strut back in. It's just that maybe you have a little more room to reach the bolts if the strut's not there. You know, you do have to hold the bolt with the um, Allen key, so that was a little more work. What we're gonna do is we're going to bolt this back to this, and we're gonna install one of the camber bolts. We're not gonna be able to hook up this sway bar link until the other side is also lifted. You see how these holes aren't gonna line up? So once the other side is lifted, then this will push up and it will actually fit right in there. Okay, this is the camber bolt. And I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it is an eccentric bolt. It has a little lobe right here. So when you turn the bolt, it basically pushes this in and out to give it the adjustability for your camber. So basically you're just gonna replace one of these main bolts with this camber bolt. All right, there you have the camber bolt installed. This washer right here is designed to fit like this and the little tip on the other end of this washer, that slides into the hole along with the bolt. And all you gotta do is tighten this nut and tighten this nut. And then we're moving on to the brake lines. Yes. All right, I actually forgot to mention these brake lines need to be pushed in to the holes. You would have done that before you put the strut in, but I forgot. It's a little more difficult to put them in there after the strut. And, uh, you know, listen, guys, I'm not a professional spray painter, all right? All right, guys, it's worth mentioning right now that these camber bolts actually have a locking nut. It's like crimped in on the end so that when you tighten it on there, it won't back off no matter what. That is a feature of the bolt, but it's made that way. So don't freak out if it's difficult to put this on. What I did was hold this side with a wrench and then impacted that on and now it's tight. All right, one last thing we're gonna do before we finish up this side is we're gonna do the little brake line spacer. That's gonna go right there in between the brake line bracket 
and the strut. All right, that's what it looks like installed. Just a little spacer. Brings this up just enough where there's enough slack on the brake line. All right, that's the front finished up. I just wanted to take a little uh, walk around with you here to show you exactly how it looks when we're finished. As you can see, the brake line ABS wire has been relocated up there. Our sway bar end links are in. Camber bolts are in. Everything's in there looking good. But there you go. That's the... Uh, the front completely done. At this point, all I have to do is put the wheels back on. All right, so as you can see, there's a huge fender gap now. I just dropped this off the jacks, and a lot of people that are installing these kits stop right here and freak out, thinking that this is the actual amount of lift that they're getting, because this is way more than an inch and a half right here. So let me show you what happens when you settle the suspension out. All I'm gonna do is steer the wheels back and forth, and you'll see it drop. Um, a better way to do it is just to drive it around, but we don't have time for that. So I'm just going to steer the wheels, but watch the, what happens when I do that. All right, did you catch that? Did you see how much it dropped? Okay, so, you know, that is one thing that you got to remember when you're doing these and you drop it right off the jack. It has to settle a little bit. It's going to settle even more once you drive it around. It'll end up it'll end up exactly an inch and a half higher than stock. So just don't freak out when you pull it off the jack and it looks really tall. I actually did forget something kind of important. I forgot to measure. Normally you would want to measure the height at the fender lip before and after the kit just to make sure you got the right amount of lift. Um, you know, you can measure it however you want, but that's how we measure it is from the floor to the lip of the fender is just kind of easier to measure it that way just so you can get an idea of the difference in height before and after you know measuring to right here from there to the ground yeah i forgot to do that on this one all right take the wheel off trip kick around the shop this tire has all the tire gloss on it look at my hands just from touching these tires holy cow i've never seen that much glossy Basically, all you have to do is take this bolt, this bolt, and that bolt loose. This box, this pops down, the spring comes out, put the spacer in, put it all back together. Fucking easy, I'm telling you. Easy. Way easier than the front. You gotta have the right sockets, though. No idea what size this takes up. Oh, I got lucky. I got lucky. It is a 15 millimeter if you're following along at home here. One bolt, two bolt. All right, here's a little life hack for you. See how that bolt is just stuck right there? It won't unthread, it won't just slide out. So what you're gonna do is put a wrench right there and pull it out. Just like that. Saves trouble, makes it faster, easy. See now there, we're not even gonna take that one loose. Normally you'd have to, but this one, not really. We're just gonna leave it. So now push this down, spring comes out. Tell me that wasn't easy. Now, rear spacer goes on this little rubber piece right here. And then it goes back on the spring. Let me show you. Now, this is gonna go on like so. It is a really tight fit, FYI, but it does go on. All right, tight fit, like I said. Now it goes on your spring, like so. See there, no problem. And then all you gotta do is jam this back in, like so. Something like, hey, there you go. Once we're done with that, we're gonna jack up right there. And then it'll all line up and then we'll put the bolts back in and then it's going to be done. Check this out. Oh, I can't really tighten the jack. I got so much tire gloss on my hands. Holy shit. All right, we're going to get underneath right there. And it will magically line back up. About that noise not a big deal okay last piece of the puzzle right here
that's pretty much it. All right, one thing that distinguishes the lower trim levels from the Badlands is that there is a piece of fabric right here on the lower trim models that isn't there on the Badlands and first editions. So this is basically the trailing arm for the Bronco Sport and you're gonna put the two spacers in behind here. That lowers the pivot point on the trailing arm and makes the tire sit properly in the wheel well. Uh, don't do like me and drop your freaking spacer down in this little crevice right here. That was stupid. All right, so you're gonna put one spacer on each side Ever so gently, don't do like I just did. And, ah, ah, there it goes again. Luckily, I can get my finger in there, but that's just annoying. Come on, get out of there. So I'm gonna try to just balance it on there and get the bolt through. There we go. That's kind of tricky. So if you run into that, you know what to do, what not to do. Don't do like I did. Now, the other tricky part is going to be threading this in without cross-threading it. We don't want to do that. Ask me how I know. All right, we're in, basically in the right location, but it's not lining up. I definitely don't want to thread the bolt in until I know that the threads are right. All right, once you've got both bolts and both spacers in, you just wanna ever so gently impact those bad boys back in there. Just like that. Now, I can release this evil felt flat right here. There it goes. There you go. Done. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for the installation on the one and a half inch lift kit for the Bronco Sport Big Bend Edition. It wasn't too tough. Honestly, you know, I've done a couple of these before, so it's like pretty easy for me. And now after you've seen this video, it should be easy for you as well. I did start this installation at about eight o'clock PM and finished at about 1030. I mean, honestly, at a leisurely pace, two and a half hours. If I didn't mess with any of the camera stuff, I could have got this done in two hours easily. So. If you're a shop watching this, that's about how much time it would take. So charge accordingly for that. But it's such an easy kit to install among all the ones that we do here. Um, this one is probably one of the easier ones, honestly. But I wanted to just do a quick walk around and show you guys the end result of the kit. And this customer is actually going to be installing some bigger tires come tomorrow and getting an alignment done. So this is not the finalized look. So, but there you go. That's just a kind of an uh, overview. Walk around with it lifted. Much better looking in my opinion. It just needs some more aggressive tires to complete the look. But that is pretty much it, guys. And I appreciate you watching this far. And I'll see you in the next video. Why does it always end this way? <laughs>